Hi guys, uh, thanks very much for uh, logging in to see this live um, tie. It's really just a sort of warm up for tomorrow's live Q&A that I'm going to have at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And I just wanted to make sure that I still knew how to use the software and the various bits and bobs. So rather than just sort of stick the camera on and say testing, testing, one, two, three, I thought I would show you uh, a little fly that I've, I've been playing about with. Um, forgive me if I don't answer the, the comments at the moment because I'll be tying and it's hard to tie the fly and look at the screen at the same time. But I see Tom's on, Pavel, Robert, great to see you tuned in guys. Uh, so without further ado I suppose I'll uh, make a start. So the hook and the vice that you see is the Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 10. And the thread I'm going to be using today is, you can't see the label, it's from Fish On and it's their Ultimate Tine Silk in Black. It's very similar to Vivas, so what I'm going to do is stick a little bit of super glue onto the shank of the hook. And that just helps um, make sure that I don't get any body rotation in the fly. So I'm just running a bed of silk down the shank to approximately where a barb would be on a hook and I'll remove my tail end. Just going to remove the excess super glue there. Uh, I'm obviously using my old vice, I'm in my office now because my Wi-Fi isn't strong enough to um, do, do a live stream from home I don't think. And not to mention the kids are streaming Netflix, Amazon Prime and all the rest of the carry on and my wife's currently raging at Twitter, so uh, it's best to come into the office out of the way. It's, it's only 10 minutes for the house, so it's not a big inconvenience. Now, the cape I'm going to be using for this fly is a, it's been dyed picrid, and it's a Greenwells cape. I've been picked up several times for calling it a, a Badger cape, and I don't know why, I, I always get mixed up, but it's a Greenwells cape, and it's been dyed with picrid. Hi Rhys, I hope you're well. I'm just going to grab a few fibres from the stem, maybe half a dozen, pull it out at a 45 degree angle and then I'll pull that away. I want it to be, yeah, about that length. <laughs> so about the same length as the shank, uh, the size 10, the 260 size 10. If uh, you're, you're old school like I am, it's equivalent to probably a Kamazan B175 in a size 12. Now, the wire rib I'm going to be using is gold, and it, this one's trout, it's a uh, fish on, sorry. And I've got the Danvilles here as well, and they're slightly different, and this is a bit more shiny gold. Uh, but I forgot to bring the spool, I just brought a little bit of wire that's hanging around the edge of my vise. And, to boot, you know what else I've forgotten? <laughs> Is to get me some pheasant tail for the body. So if you bear with me two seconds, I'll just grab one off my mantelpiece. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Bad preparation prevents piss poor for performance, as they say. So I've got a natural pheasant tail. And I just want to take two or three fibres off the stem. You can pull them off, but I like to cut mine. And I also like, when I'm doing anything with pheasant tail, unless it's tailing, is to remove these weak bits at the top. So I'll just grab that now and capture that in. If you've got any questions guys about the, the fly I'm tying, please do put them in the comments and when I get, get a minute I'll, I'll read through and I'll try and answer them if I can. Where am I? Yeah, doing about 20 things at once here, it doesn't suit me. <laughs> I'm just going to grab my um, hackle pliers, grab the body, you probably can do this with your fingers but uh, I see a lot of guys doing it with their fingers actually and I'm always in awe of them and I just can't seem to get on without using my hands. I, I like to have the tools. So, a pair of hackle pliers. 
Uh, it's always good when you're doing a live tie and the feathers slip out of your hackle pliers and you look like a right plonker. But uh, Ben Wardley's been nagging me to buy some of the Cortarelli hackle pliers, but that boy will do anything for a sale. Uh, I'm going to stick with this. You've just got to be very careful, that's all. So I've come up to around the thorax area and met my thread. Two or three turns, two or three turns in front to make sure your thread doesn't back up on you. And you can come in with your snips and just remove your waste. Next then, I'm going to bring my, uh, my rib over. Doesn't really matter if it, it's going the same way on this occasion. I'm not worried. The gold's nice and bright, so it will shine through the body. And I'm going to get about four tons of rib in there. And there we go. I mean, I thought, you know, I did a, a few Q and A's last year during the lockdown, and um, I, it, the software was like second nature. But it's been nearly a year, believe it or not, and uh, I've forgotten how to use it. So I did do some struggling this morning, trying to set up the computer and. Unlike the normal fly tying videos, I've got a mic off to the left here that actually plugs into my laptop because primarily this is a test for tomorrow so I don't look like a right idiot when I'm doing the Q&A. But uh, the mic's off to my right and the, I'm not sure how the sound quality is um, but I'm hoping that the video quality is okay. I can, I can kind of see that on my screen there. Okay, anyway, back to the fly. Next I'm going to add some... Uh, thorax and, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some trout stalkers dubbing and this is my old favourite the boosted natural and I've already got some out of the packet here now there's a couple of ways of uh, doing your thoraxes and my favourite way is to always create a little dubbing loop you can just dub it onto the thread and if I was just well put it this way if I was going into a competition tomorrow and I had to tie up 20 of these I'd be dubbing it on no doubt about it, but as I'm just tying for pleasure, I'm going to split split the thread and just create a little dubbing loop. And what you get with this is it's like a secondary hackle really, rather than a big clump of thorax. So just insert that and twist it up. I'll just read some of the comments while that's doing its own thing there. Don't worry Doug, the new vice is alive and well, it's just at home, I didn't want to lug everything into work. Video and audio quality is good, thanks for that Robert. North of Russia, wow. So, where's my invite, Magurin? I'll be over to there. Big grailing you say, I'm all about that. Uh, thanks Ian. Cheers Phil, I'll do my best. Right, so... Just got through a few of the comments there, and I'm just going to, sorry, flick my uh, magnifiers down. I know you can't see, but I'm wearing these big binocular things. And funnily enough, I need these to see the fly, but I need my glasses to see the screen. So I'm flicking between the two. Uh, so that's looking good now. So what I was saying about the thorax is you can dub on, but you don't get this kind of lovely, straggly, look to the fly if you just do that so when I've got a bit on I'm going to sweep it back and there we go and I've, funnily enough and it's amazing because very very rarely will I get exactly the right material in the dubbing loop I'm usually picking away at it but that's uh, that's been bang on next then same same cape that we used earlier the pick rig one I've picked a feather from near the bottom of the cape and usually what I've started to get into the habit of doing because it's good practice is to tie in at the tip but with this fly and with most of my crunchers to be honest unless I'm using a big feather I'm going to tie in at the stem here now before I do that I'm going to get a little bit of wax onto my thread and I'm going to just trim up that stalk slightly don't want it sticking out by the eye and then I'll catch that in 
Once you've got that in, again you can come in with your hackle pliers. Make sure you get a good grip. And then I'm looking for two turns. Don't want it over overly hackle. Just help the feather by spinning it out with your fingers. And as it comes over for the second, my thread comes up to me and I'm just going to weave through some of the fibres there. And hold it into place. Now I'm going to remove my hackle pliers. Wet the thumb and forefinger in my left hand. Slick everything back and then I can start to build my head. Now as I say, I'm kind of working from home at the minute. So a lot of the stuff from my office where I do the bulk of my fly tying um, is now at home. And subsequently, I forgot the whip finish tool. Let's see if I can remember how to do it by hand. Sure I can. And just finish off the fly. Then the little bit that I was using to turn round Get a hold of that, pull it away. And there you've got a crunch. I'm not going to call it a cruncher because the fly time police will be all over me. But it's a wet fly. I can definitely identify it as a wet fly. Uh, right, there we go. And to finish off, a little bit of Solaris UV resin. I'll just slacken off the vise. Cure it off. Somebody pointed out actually um, the glimmer nymph that I did on Friday. I was doing a section of that and uh, I forgot to cure it. And there was only one boy that spotted it, so well done. Uh, most people missed it or they were just being polite and didn't comment. <laughs> but uh, I forgot to cure it. So there you go, I've fessed up. And there's a nice wee wet fly, which you'll see it's way into my box. Covered in blood actually. Just pricked myself. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in and thanks for the uh, the feedback on the, the stream. Looks like it's good. I do like Grayland Magrum, it's one of my favourite species. But uh, I, I, you know I'm happy to fish for anything to be honest with a fly. Who else is here? Ah, hi Chris, how are you doing? Um, a cruncher McLaren. Aye, be careful naming flies, people will be all over you. <laughs> I'm going to take these big goggle sets off now. They're, they're great for fly tying these. Um, I couldn't do without them anymore, but they're really good. So hopefully, uh, I've refreshed my memory on how the streaming software works and it all seems to be the communication looks good. Uh, tomorrow, obviously, I'll just be in front of the camera answering questions, and I'll be able to pay much more attention to the uh, the the question, the the comments that are scrolling up at the side of the screen there. So, um, uh, thanks very much for tuning in, and I'm going to say bye bye. I'll tidy up the tidy up the uh, the old time kit away and get ready for tomorrow's stream. I hope to see you all there, and that's it, folks. See you next time.